What's up guys? In this video, we're going to be covering the strongest build and playstyle for Fiora in preseason and potentially going into this new season. Now, before we jump into the build, make sure to subscribe for more Fiora content in the future and feel free to check out my mobile fire guide, which will be updated throughout the preseason and into this upcoming season. With that being said, let's get into the rune setup. Now, as we are all aware, Conquer has been the dominant rune for a while for Fiora. It gives free AD into the later stages of the game, which allows for Fiora to deal a good amount of damage into team fights while keeping the stacks active. Although this rune is strong for the free AD, it isn't really reliable enough at all stages of the game. It has been nerfed multiple times this past season, and although it has been getting slight buffs, it doesn't make it the ideal rune for Fiora in the current meta. Fiora is starting to feel underwhelming compared to how she used to feel, and I think the community is starting to feel the same. The response to this is using press the attack rune setup. Now PTA feels really good in lane by giving you a lot more reliability in your early damage. It can help you get a lead more easily in lane, which will help you snowball later in the game. Now at this point you might be thinking, well how do I scale and how do I do damage late game? And to that I say, look at this clip. Surprisingly, it feels pretty good late game. PTA helps you to assassinate one champion pre-team fight very quickly, and then any fight afterwards is compensated with the items that you build, which we will cover shortly. Realistically, the reason PTA is able to be so effective is because Conquer stacks don't stay as long as we want them to. As Fiora, we don't decide how a team fight will play out. We have to play around our team and the enemy team's crowd controls as well as our long cooldown on our repost. Now, while waiting for these variables, our Conqueror stacks drop very fast, and we don't get to use that free AD that we spoke about earlier. Again, this goes into the lack of reliability that this rune offers for Fiora's playstyle. Whereas PTA helps Fiora dominate in 1v1s at all stages of the game, which is her ideal environment since she is a split pusher, and it also feels really good in team fights as we wait for the fight to begin. Realistically, on paper, Conqueror sounds like it should be better than PTA, but when it's actually played out and you understand the playstyle, PTA can feel much more rewarding. Now, as for the items, the primary mythic is Stridebreaker, and the secondary item is Blade of the Ruined King. Church of Stridebreaker stack, baby! Woo! <clears throat> Anyways, uh, Stridebreaker, if some of you know, used to be one of the strongest items when it was first introduced because it allowed for Fiora to lock enemies into fighting her as the slow was very strong. The same principle applies here, where Fiora does an immense amount of damage with PTA in 1v1 situations and we give the enemy no other option than to fight us. Stridebreaker also allows for a seamless ult combo as you don't stop moving when you use the active. And it also allows you to run down the enemy team using your snowballing lead. As for Blade of the Rune King, I have seen a lot of people being skeptical of this item, which is understandable. Its basic stats aren't very impressive as it enforces more attack speed, which technically isn't necessary for Fiora, and it gives an okay amount of flat AD compared to other items. And to that I also say, look at this clip. Now, although this is true, the passive is where this item is very strong. Basic attacks apply 10% of the enemy's health in on-hit damage. And on the third basic attack, you activate the second passive that deals 40 to 150 magic damage on hit while slowing the enemy and giving you a movement buff. Essentially, this item embodies the playstyle of PTA with the burst damage of three auto attacks while also reinforcing the slow and movement speed that you get from Stridebreaker. Now, there are many other items that I believe to be viable with this build, and I will be showing them on the screen for your reference and on how to build these depending on the game. And finally, before you click off this video, I want to address the playstyle changes that this build and rune setup allows Fiora to utilize. As I stated in the beginning of this video, Fiora has been feeling underwhelming for some time. 
It feels as if no matter how much you split or pull pressure, you can't win games. It feels that there is no impact being made from your plays and team fights since we have been having to adapt to the meta by using bruiser items such as Gore Drinker that allows us to stay alive a little bit longer, when in reality, Fiora is meant to do a large amount of damage and be nimble enough to move around team fights. With PTA and Stridebreaker, we are allowing to play almost an assassin Fiora. You can easily invade into the enemy jungle before objectives or team fights, and you can one-shot an enemy and escape without being punished because of your high mobility. You can easily find your way into the enemy backline and get out pulling aggro of the enemy team with you, allowing for your team to take advantage of this. Now, I'm not saying this playstyle is much easier, but with some practice, you will see a substantial difference in your games. Again, Fiora's win rate has been slowly dropping as we have had to adapt to this Bruiser playstyle. I can assure you that the Bruiser playstyle is not the way Fiora is supposed to be played. It feels much more refreshing when doing this playstyle and I highly recommend you give it a try in a couple of games and leave a comment down below and let me know how it worked out for you. Now, I can't take all of the credit for this build. I have a guest with me that can give a little bit more insight on this playstyle. Uh, what's up? I'm Potan213, the rank one Fiora on EUS, so I sort of got everyone hyped on the Bork build, I guess. Tons of people started playing it, right? Stridebreaker Bork and everything, now I see every Fiora is playing it. Yeah, but essentially the reason why this build is so good is because like a lot of the Bruiser items got hard nerfed. Well, Hydra got a few a few nerfs, Sterox got nerfed, Gorjanker got nerfed like really hard, but especially Conquer got nerfed. And Conquer was such a good combo with Gorjanker for long extended trades. You're just fighting for like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, just get going, getting those long trades off. Healing, that now that you don't have that, you just feel super weak. It's true you have some healing, but you have no damage. It's super weak. And now after that, these like hard nerfs and Fiora players having to go through so many build changes throughout season 11, Shield Bow, Essence Reaver, Gore, Trinity, Divine, etc, etc. And even the old stride, right? Like they, I saw that everyone was lost on a good build to play because everything got nerfed. So that's where the PTA Stride Breaker board comes to play, right? You can now play a really strong Fiora that has tons of burst, but it's really, really squishy. You have tons of mobility, you can just move around whatever you want. Essentially like a glass cannon that plays for power spikes. PTA helps you get so much burst and damage that you wouldn't have with Conk, helping out with for so many matchups and top lanes, especially squishy matchups, and allowing you to get so many solo kills. I play in approximately 1 KLP, 1.2 KLP, right? And I basically solo kill my laners every single game, right? That's how strong it is if you can master it. But it also requires a lot of skill and it's not that easy. You need a big understanding of first world, sure as a champion, vitals, proccing everything, having good spacing and movement, but also a good understanding of enemy vision and really good macro. Because essentially you're not playing a bruiser anymore, you're sort of playing an assassin, right? So you just want to like have this sort of in and out playstyle, one shot and leave, focus mainly on bursting squishies, high priority targets like a Jinx and a Philios, or maybe a Victor, right, in team fights. After those two core items, right, Stridebreaker and Bork, you mainly just want to adapt your build based on whether or not you need more damage or tankiness. Or if you want to split, you can go Hullbreaker, for example, right? But yeah, that's a general overview. I hope you guys have some success, some success with the build. And good luck. It's hard and requires a lot of skill to execute, so don't be too discouraged if it doesn't work at first. Keep at it. But yeah, if you pull it off, it's really strong. Uh, if you have any questions, you guys can check out my Twitch channel, message me on Twitch, or just join my Discord uh, and message me there. You can send me a direct message, I read every single message. And yeah, you can also enjoy a nice community, you know? <laughs> but yeah, and special thanks to Annoying Bro for letting me have a part in this vid. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, make sure to subscribe and try this build out and leave me a comment down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.